before I go to bed I love reading books I love reading words and the way the pictures look Hi, my name is Sebastian And my name is Alexander We are the Camilo Bilinguas We like reading books And we hope you like reading books too Today's book is How the Grinch Stole Christmas Every who down in Whoville like Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why no one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But, whatever the reason, he had all his shoes. He stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the hooves. The window from this cave, where we saw a grinchy phone. At the warm lighted windows, below window town. For he knew every oh, who down and who real beneath. Was busy now, he named Mistletoe Weef. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled with his grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, he knew. All the two girls and boys would wake bright and early. They would find out toys. And then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated, the noise, 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 noise. Then, the who's young and old would sit down to a feast. And they feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on who pudding and rare who roast beast, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the town the small, would stand close together, with Christmas bells ringing, they'd stand hand in hand, and the whole would start singing. Dun, 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 dun. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why? For 53 years I put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea. And a fun idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat. And he made a quick stunty claw. Hat and a coat, and he chuckled and clucked. What a great Grinchy trick! With this coat and this hat, I look just like Saint Nick. All I need is a reindeer! The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? Ha! No! The Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog, Max. Then he took some red thread and he tied a big hole into the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty socks on a ramshackle sleigh and he hitched up old Max. Then the grin said, Giddy up! And the sleigh started down toward the Homes where the Who's laid a snooze in their town. On the window were dark. Quiet snow filled the air. All the Who's 
We're dreaming sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square. This is stop number one! The old Grinchy Claus hissed. And he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch. But if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue where the little who's stockings all hung in a row. The stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slid on and spunk. Where is my most important? I landed her womb and it took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorns, and plums. And he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch, very nimbly, stuffed all the bags one by one up to Timberly. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's Feast. He took the Who Pudding. He took the Roast Beast. Cleaned out the icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of hoo hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff at the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove. When he heard a small sound like the coo of a dub, he turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who is no more than two. <laughs> the Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter who got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus! Why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? <laughs> but you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick. He thought up a lie and he thought it up quick. Why? My sweet little pot, a fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on the tree. That won't light on one side. So I'm thinking. So, so I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix that there. Then I'll bring it back here. And his fib for the child. Then he patted her head and he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the logs for the fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On the walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other Who's houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other Who's mouses. It was quarter past dawn. All the Who's still a bed, all the Who's still a snooze. When he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, and the Tinsel, the trimmings, the tappings. Three thousand feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet. He rode with his load to the tippy toe to dump it. Pull, pull to the hills. He was grinchiest humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. And now just. What they'll do, their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the hooves down in Hooville will all cry, boo-hoo.
That's a noise, grinned the Grinch. The eye simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear, and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why? This sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, merry. He stared down at Hovio, the Grinch. Popped his eyes, then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Dee dee dun dun dun. Ellie, who don't know who will, the tall and the small was seen without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came somehow or other. It came just the same. And the Grinch with his Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow. Stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without wings. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzle was solved. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas. He thought. Didn't come from a star. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light, and he brought back the toys and the food. For the feast, and he, he himself, the Grinch, called the roast beast. The end. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You're a wasp, the last stunt. You can find this book and many more at your local library. I love to go to libraries, look around and search, and I read so many books that I learned a lot of words. I can tell you stories that you never ever heard, and I love to read about people different than me. And I'm thankful I can read, I'm thankful I can see, and before I go to bed, yeah, I love reading books.